hi everybody that's here. Got any other proposed changes in the agenda? Just a couple of things. I have got one. Um, public huh? comment. What? Do you have a public comment? No. Okay. Public, sure, I see several, and I know. Right. Whoever's here first. No, no, they're here for what's on the thing. Yeah, She's off for what's on it. Oh, my bad. Right. Okay. It would be you, would Then it would. Okay, well, I wanted to bring in some signatures for the resolution that um, I spoke with you about probably three meetings ago. Right. And we have signatures on the petition because you wanted us to show that there was some support for it in the community. So, um, here they are. They missed a town meeting. Can you read the first a little bit? I oh, I'm sorry. We have no idea in the public what you're talking about. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, your memory should dig back no, there. Not, not mine. I'm talking about anybody <laughs> else right. besides the board. This is the uh, climate solution resolution that they wanted to do at town meeting. And some wires got crossed, so the signatures didn't get in, so it didn't get put on the back town meeting, yes. on the town meeting agenda. And she had been here and had a teenager who was already going to talk about it too. Who was, but uh, right. But mm -hmm. anyway, the Miss Janet said, and <coughs> we said at the time that this sort of thing, you know, because there weren't the signatures. So she has now since gone up and been committed, right, yeah. has um, has obviously gotten a bunch of signatures, which we can take the time and read the resolution. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, I've done that with petitions too. It's like, oh yeah, there's plenty of space on the back. Um, so that we can put this on next month's agenda and talk so about it. The vote is to adopt the resolution and then urge the state, as I select for my part, to please do the. Um, uh, I think it's 90%. Yeah, 90% of its energy by 2050. No, urge them to do it faster and more efficiently and work on it. Work harder. Right? That's good. That's right. Work harder. Thank you. Got it. Sure. Thank you. what the plan is for reclaiming it. I know you have to reclaim it for Act 250. And if you're going to reclaim it and it can be used for ag, we'd like to keep using it. And just wanted to discuss what reclaiming that would look like. Okay. Are we even digging into that part now? Oh, you guys took a big chunk out. J just barely, again. just a couple of months, a couple of weeks ago when yeah. Tate yeah, was up Yeah, there. like, what, a week after we manured it? I talked to Mark. I talked to Mark at the town garage, 
And he said, oh, we'll just take a little bit on the end. I said, okay, I won't manure it. You guys can strip it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I heard nothing. And then he stopped and told us, oh, I don't know what happened over there. Um, so I went over and looked. I wasn't very happy, but that's what you get when you have rented land or yeah. whatever. Um, now, it's not a great big piece of no, it's that, not. that we <coughs> But then there's now. the section down below where you guys have taken the gravel out that needs to be reclaimed and put back into something. And right now it just has very minimal topsoil on it. Like you couldn't grow something on there if you wanted to because it hasn't been yeah, it's much. Just, right. It's really just been sprinkled on there. So it needs some topsoil on it. And it'll, it'll need some attention. And we're fine with putting attention in it if we're going to keep having the lease of it and you guys don't mind putting the topsoil down. Well, we have the stuff to seed it. We can seed it and manure it and mm -hmm. keep it right. growing. Here. But Are we, we didn't have something pit? to start with. Are we through with that part of the pit? I, heard, I thought we could go deeper. We can, but it's going to be, I would say, I don't know, I'd have to, but I would say it's going to be another... Man, what you got up there? You must have another three years, huh, Rob? At least, yeah. I'm, I'm just, season, I'm yeah. just saying, three years. I don't want to go too much farther well, out. The, what Joanne's talking about is a is a need of the town under the Act 250 permit to have no more than three acres of exposed soil. So that includes your stockpile areas, your active area where your road is, all that stuff. So you add it all that up and you get three acres. The rest of it is supposed to be sea and mulch and growing okay. stuff. Right. Right. Not a lot of standard there, so they did the minimum, which is right. You can't really pay that. No. Probably can't even drive over it without going through. Right. You know, there's really nothing to, there's no stability to that. There's no erosion or water issues because we're sitting above that, plus there's no active streams or anything like that. So it's not an environmental issue, it's more of a land use question. Right. And the Act 250 Permit requirement is just just as simple as don't leave more than three acres exposed at the end of the season. So it doesn't really. We didn't really go to the next plan. If you got an Act 250 permit now for a gravel pit, you would have a much more aggressive plan for right. that. So we're doing the very minimal, but we have also worked with the with the Ring families and Davis Hill Farm to try to try to use the egg that was there because it wasn't. We were just brush hogging it, or whatever. So they agreed to cut it for a number. I don't know if this is from the beginning or it's been a long time. We took it My over, dad's I think, been town. Around. I think town had corn there. The town farm. Did the, the town did or Benny did? Um, Rowdy Town, I think. Rowdy did when Benny owned it? Long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah it we, used to be corn. We took it over, I don't know, it's probably been eight, eight ten years. Oh, God, it's been way. longer than that because we've had a single yeah. town for a long time. Oh, yeah, I've been longer yeah. than that. Yeah. No, oh, Dad did it, yeah. We, <coughs> plowed, we plowed it and seeded it and then yeah. spent grass. And so so that's the, the lower part is what we're talking about. And we don't know if we're done there, done, done, because we haven't done the next layer of deep pouring. To know so you're, you're talking about where the sand screen's setting now over yeah, there. That. Yeah, it comes <coughs> about the western side. Well, I did talk to Mark here not too long ago, and they were going to loop around and go back towards the uh, uh, road. Yeah. Um, I would say another year they could probably end up topsoil and that down there on the, by the tanks and stuff. Yeah. No? So that, that we don't have that kind of a plan yet. The, the, Charlie said that if it was this is years ago when we knew we were going to start to creep over there he goes, oh, no, no problem now, because there was still six, seven acres up there. Now he says, if it gets below three, it gets a little harder to maneuver the machinery and stuff. Right. So whether we're at that point now on the upper part, I don't know. But well, there's least, still going to no. be. We still going to have. Yeah. yeah, it's like more five or six acres maybe up top. Mm -hmm. and then, I don't think you have five acres. You might have it. And then the ten down below, yeah. there's really no anything. There's not there without a lot of work. So that's the no, area that we don't know how. Are we done done it on three acres down there? I don't know, you know, for an example of what we're going for. Uh, so that, I think we need to figure figure that out. Not only because the Act 250 permit says you shall reclaim when you're done, we can avoid the done done for now because we're going to be on that new cut for 
four or five years at least, probably, as we work our way back towards the road. But that's going to leave the lower part. What, should we put some money in to get, get a good three acres of hay and start? And that's kind of what you folks are. Because we wouldn't do that. The highway crew wouldn't do that. But the leaseholder right. might have a, if, you, if they wanted to reclaim, and we knew that the ball fields were going to get infringed upon, which is not on our horizon, but we reclaim the lower for the new ball fields eventually. Because mm -hmm. then all that land under the ball fields is also ground. But, but that's so far down the road, I think we're looking at maybe five year windows. So what we can do in the next five plus or minus. But as Dave said, I don't know what the permit is. Can we go down deeper now or I guess we'd have to get instead uh, of going out into the field you're saying right. that, go down that, deeper where that was my, my question was why well, that's, would you get it down to Well where, I don't know what a permit says. Menage I'm is sorry about uh, uh, Harrison now is yeah. it, a lot deeper now. A lot yeah. deeper. Oh, yeah. yeah. And but I'm sure it's like, years deeper maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get the permit out and well, see. we haven't tested deeper so that's another issue so if you wanted to start that plan that's a different plan of looking down the next layer so we've tested the whole call it the north layer the south layer being the ball fields the north layer towards the road has been tested to go down that 20 30 40 feet we don't know anything below that so we'd have to do more boring to figure that out I guess yeah, is it sand or gravel and what or use, water. What use yeah. it has. I think we have to have three or four feet of water, so that's another factor. I just want to see the Davis family, the Ring family, put a lot of money into that so they can cut it in, in, in two years. They know we're going to go down, and all your work is yeah. for not. Right. I'd rather really go up and do yeah. a study on it and do yeah. some borings, find out what we do have, and if it ain't no good, fine. Well, see we can close it, it, close it, right. That's right. At one point, then you right. know we're not going to mess around with it there. Right. Whatever right. money put into yeah. it. Right. right. I got a funny feeling if you go deeper up there, you're definitely going to use the road sand. I don't know how good a gravel is going to be, but well, you know, looking at Banash's pit, they've right. got they don't have no stone over there at all. It's pretty, pretty sandy. sandy. But yeah. they still use it for sand. You know, sand in the roads. But right now they're in some good rock up there, but it's just too clean. You take it out of the bank, put it on the road, it don't work very good. I know. So our five year, we have to report five years. In March 2020 is the next five year report to Act 250. So part of that report, we could beef up the engineering a little bit and try to look at the close. Is there a close close on that? As far as our interest, we need to gravel with rocks. You know, if it's all beach sand, it's not gonna, it's not our primary purpose over there. It's really the gravel and a little bit of stone is what we really benefit from. But if that area is, because we have the whole south half yet to go, and that's if we test it and find out it's beach sandy and matches kind of what Banach is getting into, we could probably close that for 20 or 30 years before we'd ever think that that sand was worth going after again. But we don't know that answer yet. Beach sand. And, and with what Mark said when he come to you, I think when you were talking to Mark, that was the plans at first, just to talk a little bit of that topsoil off, and then they got an excavator up there and they reached as far as they could. You know, right. to to, right. to to be able to come back this way. So I think when Mark talked to you the first time, I think he was on board. That's that was what, the plan. What was going to happen? And they took too much from underneath. He said, or something. The top soil was falling in. And, and that's what happened. So then they had to do more, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, they got an when you get an excavator up there, you want to use it kind of for what you, and that's what all he did is send it out as far as he could reach right what's the reach on them 18 feet he had that big one he had big, big one big so 20 22 uh, feet 22 foot yeah imagine. 22 so so what would we like to do <laughs> well i don't want to give them i don't want to say nothing till we figure out what we want to do up there to right. to you know yeah. because they don't want to put no time exactly. money into yeah. it and, right well and, no i mean we just want to get the conversation started so right. that we all know right. that yeah, something's coming right. and what do we plan on you, you, you probably got what three acres up there to still the farm on that right yeah. right where the topsoil is yeah. around that yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so you can get two cuts off that yeah sometimes three just yeah on the, it don't look too thick at least no, it, it was it was okay it was it was I mean, it was pretty good what we cut so far, but yeah. it is getting, then the clover's getting out of it, and 
So, so you're going to have to replant it again. That's what you're thinking. Well, that's what we're thinking. We'd like right. to, if we're going to have it, and yeah, that's exactly or, that's costly. Or just oh, yeah. fertilize it, or, or, or maybe we've got to do keep... something different with fertilizer, or you know, like right. that but down before... in the. So. What's the next step for us? Well, I'm thinking of expanding the, the yeah, expanding the engineering report. We use Granier Engineering, who has all their drawings in the Act 250 file, and see if they'll do, you know, some kind of boring test in that western right. edge, western side, where mm -hmm. the big topsoil pile is mm -hmm. now, and where they've done that little light seeding. And would, if we yeah. can, if we see stuff at I, five I feet, that's that. not anything we're going to go after because we're looking for the chasing the rocks. Right. Then we won't be there for a long time because we have the southern right. edge. So we, then, then the reclaim becomes more of a good investment for. Right. Yeah. So then it's worth it. I mean, if you guys can put the topsoil that's up there to reclaim it down, that's then we can for. then we can right. put the manure and the seed right. and right. it's then it's worth it for us to go in and, and do that right. part. Sure. And we've always tried to you know work out with you guys and the rec committee. You know, make sure it's cut when they want to have a big event over there. Mm -hmm. or, not the other right point, if that is good gravel, then yeah. so how many yeah. years would it be feasible for you if that yeah. did happen? I mean, how many, how long would you have to figure you get your money going out of the A? Would it be five years? Or would it be six years? Or five to ten? <coughs> five to ten. ten is That's definitely better. I mean, five yeah. is sort of. I mean, it's going to take a year or two to get it there. Yeah. yeah. And then. And then you've got. Okay. okay. You know, I'm not a farmer. I just, it's not instant. Yeah. Right. You know, we talked about making more compost because that's what that lower part really needs is some something that manure probably wouldn't help it, but the compost would give the soil more, yeah, more nutrients in it. So, Ron, when? Well, we would call. I mean, we, Mark and I talked about closing up the pit at some point this fall, and at that time is when the engineer comes out to say. Yep, you you have seven acres of exposed. You need to figure this out. So that's what we would plan to do anyway. Okay. We can add to that report by saying, what do you think about doing some test boring that you know, drilling rig up there and go down the 15, 20, 30 feet, or whatever they do, and then tell us what the story is. for If it, there's nothing there to go for, we just walk away from it. Right? And then it would be a lease agreement with the rings here. So we can... Mark mentioned too, we didn't know what the law was of me being down in the pit. Like, with my equipment. Because you guys are active because and part guys, of it. If you guys are working that day, probably I couldn't be in there. <clears throat> There's a way to get around that. Yeah, I mean, if you work you can, anything, you can, um, You can kind of build a berm and not beyond that point. Okay. You know, you built a berm four feet high all the way around to your right. spot that you wanted to hay or whatever. You could, you could get around that one. Sort of like you have at the top. Yeah. And then use your access. Or right. Yeah. yeah. We just want to make sure it's feasible for both parties that you, know, oh, sure. you guys have oh, yeah, no, what sure. you need and that, right. make sure it's Act 250 compliant, but that so we'll be it's worth our later this year. time to yeah. put yeah. seed we'll on see it. So it sounds like there. fall is when we're scheduled. So do you think they'll test it in the fall, or you schedule it to be tested well, in the we, fall? We, I'll be back before the board saying what the plan is, yeah. So if they, if they recommend that as a good time, and Mark is already saying he's going another direction, we just, what we didn't want to do is accelerate the ball fields. Right. right. So if we find, if that stuff, when they start going down and that freshly stripped is all bad, and we know the stuff under that reclaim area is all bad, we might have to take a right turn into that ball field a lot sooner than we thought. Well, that hope isn't true because that's almost done. As of last year. I could, I could be off the board. By now. <laughs> I, <would. laughs> I could definitely be gone by then. <laughs> if that's this fall, I'm gone. Oh yeah, we're not anticipating that. We're okay. Twenty years. Of peace, oh, okay. Probably. All right. All right. The people got to know what what it was bought for. Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 No. Um, I don't want to see that neither. But we can. We can. Engage everybody again later than the fall. Okay, is that okay? That for you guys right now? Yeah. yeah, we just wanted to get the conversation no, started. No, thank good. you for doing so it. So we're all yeah. on the same. No, thank you. That let's just get this planned and find out what's going on. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Also. All right, you got it. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Okay. 
I bet. So, so you'd like talk about a road. <laughs> well, I I met with all of you when you were out doing the site visit, and you said that you were, were going to discuss it this meeting. So I'm here hoping you're going to do that. Right. We'll we try to when folks come in try to move things around and talk about that first so that you don't have to sit through the whole thing. Yes, unless, I appreciate it. Unless, <laughs> unless I, you really don't have anything you want to do this evening. <laughs> I, I so, looked at that and thank you very yes. much. Oh, three, yeah, 23, yeah, 23. <laughs> uh, um, so you want, what I'm hoping, what my hope for is in, in my involvement is seeing that the class portal road is, is downgraded to, I said thrown up, but you like it to be downgraded to a trail right. because it looks highly un, unfeasible. Is that it's not feasible to ever make it back to a road, and there's an issue with um, the GPS sending up everyone up there because it shows as a road. So that concept being, if it was downgraded to a trail, we would get rid of this problem with trucks and everything going up there and getting stuck. And it wouldn't, used to the town would still have control of it as a trail, but um, I, I don't think you ever thought, it, after looking at the bottom of it, that it ever probably would be made back into a road anyway. No, I think that's probably right, but it's um, our, our wise person here, as uh, I think it's, it's um, you know, if we give it up, that. Who knows what it looks like in 50 years and what people want to do with something. And we may, you know, end up going, boy, what did those dummies do back in the whatever? But if you turn it back into a trail run, you're still got the rights to bring it yeah. back. Yes, right. exactly. Class four exactly. Run. exactly. And that's why, right. I, that's why I said that, because right. we can bring yeah. it back instead to class of, three, of getting rid four, of it, three. Can, can do the, thing about, the thing about um, putting it into the trail if there's any washouts in there, the meeting you and I went to, you don't have to worry about the ditching, you right. don't have right. to worry about the, the stone in, you don't have to worry about the runoff of water, it goes to a trail. So actually it saves a lot of money. Oh yeah. And, and it solves the problem, I mean, that, right, that who knows so how long it is before Google gets around to taking it off, but that's right. a different <clears> but, 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 and, and we can also, in terms of doing, I mean, I. I know from other communities it's really hard to get them to make changes, but as you know, part of doing this, we could town send them a letter. Well, um, also, and I haven't gotten a Vermont map in a while, but if you buy it back when people bought Vermont maps, they didn't look at their cell phones, it's on Vermont. It shows that road on the Vermont map. It's on the map. It's, it's on the map, right? Yes. It, it, so that's, it needs, I think, you made it into a trail that would get it off. Everything. Yeah. I don't guarantee yeah. that. Yeah, I know. I, I don't either, but that would be the goal. That would be the goal, but uh, <laughs> I know I got some that. roads that yeah, are trails. Trail, I can walk up there. <laughs> right. and, and I still think, you know, the idea that you had right up there at the beginning of, of putting in the gate that you never close. So in the short term, which could be a couple of years before Google gets around to changing anything, um, you know, it would give people a visual clue. They have this on um, Webster Road, and and Google keeps shipping everybody down their dead end road. Don't look a notch. Giant, oh. and, yeah. yeah, and a giant truck got stuck down there. The one past the Lampier Farm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. On the left. Yeah, yeah. I live on Grimes Road. It tells people to get to my house by going through the Webster, Webster Road. road. That's what. Because uh. see, years ago yeah. that road connected over on. Well, where we call Lange Road. Now it's Will Grimes, I guess. But uh, Well, there's two no, roads Grimes, that used to connect yeah. up on Davis oh. Hill, too, yeah. that used to exactly. connect yes. over and yeah. they're not yeah. connected yeah. anymore. Right. right, but it's, yeah. Google is still shipping. I've been there with a GPS with a lot of cattle. I'm like, I don't think I want to go up this road, but this road's telling me to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I do want to go up this road. Yeah. And it really is in the winter when it's snow banks and, right. you know, it's, I did think about what you said about the gate. I just, I, I'm always in favor of a big, huge 
sign that says stop instead of the dainty little. Oh yeah, yes, I, don't want, little I don't want right. people to get to the T so and then go left, or we've just fed them in the other direction. See, I, that's what I thought about. Afterwards. Good thought. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, got that. Right, and then right. I'll just go down and then yeah. I promise we'll go to the Okay. Just keep it in the other, because then it's just the other end. You know, okay. and, and I think part of that big sign is ignore Google. Mm -hmm. I mean, it really is. You need to. Well, you need the to signs tell are here. I mean, they made that right. very tasty. Bless you. But I think you need, like, like right. now when you go to Smuggler's Notch or whatever, they say way ahead. This means you turn around. And they still yeah. go. Yeah, <laughs> that's what's so amazing. Yeah. Is they still go. But, but probably a smaller number of them still go than if you didn't. Well, I had two already this year. The week after it opened, for something like yeah. yeah. Okay, so I guess I'm what we through. would need, let's see, we could do a, uh, a motion to change the... Well, no. No? No. Oh, no. You're, all you need tonight to help with the official formal notice, yeah. which will be... Uh, much more involved right. process will be a visit, right. consensus that you would move to reclassify the class four okay. from the end of the class three, which is the top of the hill by the Webster Barn, all the way to Grimes mm -hmm. as a yeah. public track. Or, uh, or a quiet lane, I guess it would be. Yeah, so it'll still have all the names. Yeah. So the quiet lane will still stay right. at the top, but Town Highway 38, which goes all the way through, will be broken up into class three and a public track. Which means person walking, correct? Walking. At any time. Walking, yeah. Yeah. It just closes still it to people with like motorized vehicles. Motorized vehicles. Uh, you have to have a separate rule for that. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can lock out motorized vehicles and do all those other control issues that you want to do. But right now, the public trail will allow snowmobiles and ATVs and things like that to still go on it. But it, they can't get there unless it's frozen solid, I think. Yeah, to get through. Yeah, that's right. 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 Which option they could do that. Okay, so we just need consensus. Roger, what do you think? Makes sense? No. Nope. Not going to take fire trucks through? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not going to walk you through. I, neither am I. <laughs> oh, we'll be a lot of black flies out there right now. Oh. Everybody that works, so we'll start moving forward. Super. Thank you. Thank you. So I'd be glad to come back to any other meetings that you need. Okay, if you need anything, Ron will let you know, but I think we're... Yeah, okay, I think we're, we're done. The, the official process includes a written certified letter to your house. 30 day notice, or some, some sort of plenty of notice. Uh, we got one email from Mr. Johnson who was asking for no outlet sign as the process, whatever the process was, but an immediate helper have the oh, yeah. standard town highway sign at the end of the class three that says no outlet. Mm -hmm. End of the class three. I, I would put the no outlet sign right right off Route 15. Yeah. That's where I would put the no outlet sign. Yeah, you could put it there too. That, now sure. that would make perfect yeah. sense to me. Yeah. Believe yeah. us, you know, a whole bunch of other signs have to <laughs> go with right. it. <laughs> well, the other signs are cute. They, they're really cute. Right. I, I want to really knock you over the head. But you're right, doing it right where you turn onto Webster Road is the... Uh, that would be... Yeah, that would be a place to put it. Yeah. Or two signs. Right. Yeah. Well, we can reuse them again when it becomes a public trail and there's a gate. We can have the second one. <coughs> well, that's right. That. And we can start with no outlet and then we'll put another one another 50 yards up. This is, we're really serious. <laughs> <laughs> and put one down when they get stuck. We told you so. <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> I might be wrong, but on Smuggler's Notch, isn't wasn't there something now that they find people mm -hmm. if they go up there with trucks and they have to take them out? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, how would that work? If it said no, uh, no outlet. It don't work. You could be fine. You get, <laughs> no. you get a you get a truck from Montreal. They're not going to be back here. You, you know, there's people that tried to get them out. Of, people that try to get money out of them for doing things. It's going to cost you more money to try to get the money that you're never going to get. get it. Right. You don't right. get nothing out of it. Let's try with some better signage and see if we have more luck that way. Okay. We'll well, there also, also are people like people who are trying to come to my house that end up there and go, I'm at Yellow Farmhouse and I don't know how I got where you are. I mean, I tell people that not to do that. But if there was that sign right at the beginning, I, I, I like that that's right. people would say, right. oh, I've already made a mistake. Right. 
Thank you. <laughs> you could go, when you get to no outlet, call me. Yes, that would do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And the Roger at the Bocash Water Supply. Wait for them to do their maintenance on their spring. And See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. When they get it done, and we'll take and go up further and put a water bar in to divert the water down onto their property. But you know, uh, they've got to fix their spring tunnel. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. That's that's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah. Because that's all been burned up there. It looks good. Yeah. And they agreed to do that? I mean, are they... They're working on it. Yeah, okay. So we're okay there? We are for now. Unless, right. you know, once they get their spring tile fixed, and, we'll and see... You just leave it with them that when they get it fixed, they'll be in touch with you? And... Yeah. Okay. And see what the water does that. Yeah. That's... Okay. Okay. Purchase order for crushing at the pit. Didn't that used to be thirty thousand, Ron? Oh yeah, it used to be thirty, then it was thirty-two five, and this year it's thirty-eight. And you got Fred McCall McCall Caller coming in, or who do they got coming yeah. in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know his first name. Fred. always an increased date. Okay, it's on in the, in the packet of stuff, it's, it's What's, on um, 12. How many yards is that going to give, give the guys, $38,000 worth? Now if we get over 10, 10, if we get over 10, then it's the, the bid rate. If it's under 10, then it's a little higher rate because it's worth less than this. That year. makes sense to do 10 then. Yeah. Or more. Well, they, that's they where, got, that's when got. we got to thirty-two five. Was we were we were bumping at the under ten at thirty thousand. So the thirty-two yeah. five got us to a little over ten thousand. They've got on the on the. Uh, so you, he he numbered the pages. If you go to page twelve. Yeah. On on your packet. Yeah. You'll see it. They got eleven eight seventy five yards. Okay. So we just need a motion to set the thirty-eight thousand on the crushing. Not to exceed. Not to exceed yeah. for McKellar for the crushing. That's thirty-eight thousand. Making that motion. Oh yeah. Okay. Any more discussion? Good. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Conflict of interest policy. No changes since the last meeting. meeting. Yes. Hit out May. Yep. <laughs> the uh, clarification is that the After July 1st, the municipality still has to adopt one, but only by public vote. If you do it before July 1st, it could be by policy. So it's, it's a different process. Ordinance by public vote type of thing, which is pretty up there, dude. I don't think the state government usually asks us to do things like that. Yeah. Uh, but if you do it before July 1st, you can have the we just have the policy by the board. So that's why we're doing it now. That's what we're trying to do it now. Right. It seems like it's. I suppose in some towns the public wants enforce, well, you know, they force the board to do something so there's an issue resolved. When you get into a Burlington size. Yeah, some, you know, like people it. run all the thousand different scenarios through your policy and they find out there's a problem. <coughs> make a big public vote kind of level issue out of it. So the only thing that would happen, this is the VLCT template, but if, we would, <coughs> if the board adopts it, we'll do a, a final version of it with the 
there, there's like one spot that says legislative body and change that to select board and probably get rid of some of the notes on here and those kind of things. But if you're good with it, then we'll clean up for adopted policy by the board on June 17th and be done with it. And then we'll probably take it into the new personnel policy as a chapter when that gets done. Okay. Yeah. I'm fine with that. Okay. We need to move to accept it as a policy? Yeah. Okay. Need a motion to accept it. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. I thought this was actually kind of interesting. The annual dog warrant. We got a list of the link. Yeah, hand out a list. Kim brought in a list of all the 75 owners that have not licensed their dog. And that could be anything from a, a son or daughter moving, taking yeah. the dog that they don't tell us about, or the dog dying, or somebody selling the dog, or whatever happened. Have you seen the list? Yes, it was up. <laughs> it was up. Front it's here, right? It's for eight minutes. It's yeah, here, here somewhere. Oh, huge. That's good. There's another one. Good for things. Yeah. Okay. It's only one list. So here, <laughs> here they all are. Yeah. First thing I oh, checked, and I went, "Okay, I'm all right." No, this is just we've got one copy. <laughs> um, but so, what do we usually do with this? For a leap to conclusion, what do we usually do with this? Put a piece Nothing. in a paper. No. Nothing. The. Uh, the warrant is a warrant to pick up and humanely destroy the animal if it's not licensed. Oh my God! Well, it is, it's like I read the I read the thing in here and I went, "Just a second. That's what, that's what you're signing. Oh, it, it's, 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 I thought no, it's like that. It's responsibility of all and, and, and these animals. So it's it's based on the public health of the town. You don't want unlicensed, unvaccinated right. dogs in Night Park. But that's state law anyway. And the warrant is the state law, almost right? Almost verbatim from the state law. So the dog warden or the animal control officer at I Park needs authority to enforce the state law by taking a dog. It's almost like having a police gotcha. warrant. You can't take something from somebody unless you have a warrant. So that comes under uh, as a um, constable's duty. Should should definitely. I think that is a constable's duty. <laughs> Four boxes. <laughs> so anyway, we don't we don't do nothing. Gotcha. We haven't yeah. killed any dogs. Well, I know we're, I know that person who's got dogs. those hunting dogs. So the, it, so it's a, it's a our animal control officer will contact each and every yeah, one so, of those. Right. So I was going to go over the process. Right. We don't ever, at least in my seven years, have gotten to the end, which is to take a dog and euthanize a dog. That never happened. Good. That, that, go, that go over good. Yeah. The first part that happens is the ACOs, Diane Stoney and others that are working with her, will call the 75 people and yeah, see if the dog moved, died, right. whatever. And then we'll have a smaller list of 35. Okay. And, then and generally those place. people come in and say, oops, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> if by chance there's somebody that refuses to license their dog, then we have the enforcement of the ordinance, and then eventually we could get to the point of trying to get the person to release the dog to an adoption agency. Yeah. But we hardly ever, never do you want to go to euthanize unless it's a vicious dog attack or something like that. Right. You, did, 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 yeah, so we yeah. usually have this many dogs that they don't get yeah, licensed? It's really? I it's, think, under, it's under 100. Usually. I'm going to say that that is light from the last one. Yeah, we got. It, it, it can be over 100, but yeah. this is under 100, which is better. Maybe they just forgot about it. I don't know. Well, that's right. I expect a lot of people. But yeah. Put a piece of paper or something and say, hey. You know, at the last known address, they've got multiple leak notices. So this is the end of that process. About front, front porch form. Well, they right. don't do it anyway. So it's a... No, but they've done enough notice and right. mailings to know that they're done no. upstairs, what they can do. Now the ACOs have to take it. Gotcha. Mm, okay. I like that one there. Ooh. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Big city. Well, they, they, that's again, I think. I think well, sure, because where are She they? didn't take hers with her. Yeah, yeah, she did. She did? Well, yes. that's why. That yeah. dog's in Africa. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dogs weren't with them. Wicked. Yeah. So we can 
We can tell them upstairs that one. Yeah, that's going to say right you know that one. Um, okay. That's because when I, in the packet, when I read this, I went, just a second. <laughs> it has the same reaction the first time yeah. from everybody. All right. Okay. Yep. Great. I thought the ball fields would be trouble. This is really good. <laughs> okay. I can make a motion that we... Accept and refer. Accept and refer. We have the talent officer start the process of calling and contacting and find, see who's here and who's not here, and then we'll go into further action if need be. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Um, we started talking about doing some kind of an improvement plan, a variety of things that we could that we could do. Ryan, do you give everybody a copy of the, of the proposed? Oh, uh, last meeting. Yeah. Not this, not this packet, no. No, okay. And this, we, we can just plug along with this. It's, um, I'll, I'll sort of tie because we were talking about the, um, the the event that we did Saturday which is um, actually it's a great opportunity we're thinking you know you periodically get take a nice Saturday and go sit in front of fork and gavel with a cup of coffee for an hour and a half it's amazing how many people will stop in and talk to you about just a whole variety of things yeah. and, it, and it's a great informal way to ask people what they're thinking about what you know whatever whatever it is what they what they'd like to see and that sort of stuff and so sort of running these ideas past would you do it and people volunteering people really like the idea of doing some and again tying in with this is like what we want to try to do and we're getting a core group together is every month and there are a couple of things that already exist like the ice cream social and we'll connect with them and help them do it the uh, uh, home days in September, but to every month do some kind of fun family event that you can do in town that doesn't cost any money. Just just really supporting families and kids and having a good time. And the the, the history trail that's out there right now, and the and the library did along our chunk of the rail trail a storyboard about a. It's a story about a grandpa and their <clears throat> grandson getting into watching birds, and it's just um, people loved it. They had a they had a wonderful time doing it. And some folks who didn't, they said, and you and and what we realized when we used some of the some of the grant money, I had um, Fork and Gavel made some cookies, so when people came by, they could have a cookie. And then we also, when you can finish the scavenger hunt and there's a question on the back for each one of the there are 17 stops you know and there's a question that if you read it it's right there and if you turn it in you get a five dollar gift certificate at fork and gavel and it is um it was great watching families do it um i went uh friday morning over with the on roland's show you know and, and we talked about it so again i think sort of doing those sorts of Things and having people associate Hyde Park with doing fun family things that don't cost you a lot of money is long term is going to do nothing but help this community. Um, as I say, part of it it's with the it's you know it's with the ball field. Most of the people that live in this town have no idea that the ball fields are there and that there's all that wonderful fun stuff that goes on up there and all those great games. You know, and and, and most of the people know. who use ball fields don't live in this town. Yeah. Yeah, so. you know, so so it's you know here here's a resource in Hyde Park that we don't use, um, so so anyway, this idea of, of the of the neighborhood improvement, and Ron put him, he can do it again. Um, um, it's how we do some how we do some cleanup things. It's just lots of little ways to figure out how to get people to feel like they're part of a community and can do something in the community that doesn't cost them money and that you, and again, you can do as a family. But you know that there is things that you can do, like uh, we already have ordinance, you can't have 
unregistered vehicles. I don't know how many. I don't know what ordinance yeah. is. And there's ordinance like that. But I don't know how you're going to tell anybody how they can keep their property. Well, my, I don't think my, you're telling them. I mean, my this clean isn't telling and, and Rolly's right. clean and yours clean. Right. And it's right. two different. I, it's not. It's not telling anybody anything like that, Dave. This is just. It's an opportunity. Here's here can be some place that's just um, kind of a mess, and the people want to pick it up, you know. Or if if you know you can have, and again, if we, you come up with some guidelines and say, here's what, here's what, here's the sorts of things that's eligible, and you'll get some volunteers to help. I mean, some folks, it's just because they literally can't do it. Oh, well, literally can't afford it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, or or no. again, it's the cleaning up that we've talked crime. about. Uh, yeah, you know, do we do we do a green up Hyde Park Day kind of thing right. sometime like in the fall? And uh, it, and again, there it's interesting talking to people. There are a lot of people that might have an old mattress. It isn't necessarily the expense that's in the way. For some people, it's the cost, but for other people, it's like they don't have a pickup truck. You know, and if it's mm -hmm. like how how are you <laughs> how are you going to deal with these things if you don't have a pickup truck and none of your friends have a pickup truck, or you know you're you know you're retired and you're older and you're not going to move a refrigerator. So I I think there are a lot of those things that we can sort and and again talking to people we can just kind of work our way into it and try to do some things. It's not at all about telling people here's how you need to you know here's what you have to do to keep your property pretty or, well, or that I, kind of thing. I'll give you an example. I've got some hazardous waste, well, paint, uh, oil, oil based yeah. paint. I went to the landfill the other day when I went took my stuff to the landfill, I said, you take hazardous waste? No, we don't have hazardous waste. The only time you can get rid of it is number one green up day, and they have one in Worcester. Well, they, they, have, they have one in Paint Morrisville. is hazardous waste? Oh, yeah. yeah. Paint, stain, all that stuff, yep. Yeah. What they told me, they they oil based paints, is just, just leave the cover off it and let it dry. They, they wouldn't take it. Really? Oh, yeah, they won't. Yeah, that's all goes solid waste district now. And they, they How come we put it on our walls? How come we put it on our houses? How come we put it around if it's hazardous waste? Well, that's what they told me to take cover off, leave it, let it shut. Yeah. Yeah, I've been told that. That's, I, I'm the bigger telling you, is the oil I've, yeah. I've, I've done well, a lot of that. Tax that and he's got latex that. has no problem. You, That's you, what I'm talking about, oil base. Oh, you oil oil okay. Latex oil not base. hazardous. Yeah. Even but the, even, the, even the liquid form, latex is not hazardous. But they had a thing here this spring, you could bring it in. Yeah, they do one in Morrisville. They do, usually do one in Morrisville, one in Tatrels. Yeah, and well, they were they doing one down in... Uh, yeah. But right. all the the something else is going on. Right? Yeah, but you know, one time a year is not enough to keep people's places clean. No. Green up day once a year is not enough to keep people's places clean if they have to pay to get rid of it. Right. Right. You're right. No, that exactly. that's right. But that's as we sort of say, okay, as we as we try some smaller projects and people want to volunteer, okay, if we worked with Casella, who's now bought somebody else out too and is getting <laughs> bigger and bigger. You know, there, because again, I was in the the full dumpster that we had down here, green up day. And I remember looking, cost us what, like six hundred bucks. You know, and and so I'm sure you know, working with them, and again, that's just a, and somebody would have to, you know, they need to, they need to be on the checklist in Hyde Park, mm -hmm. so you didn't, so you didn't have everybody in the whole world coming. You know, but again, try some smaller projects first of all. So you got some volunteers and some people with trucks, and we can get the. I probably got a dumpster next to my house, and a dump next to the house. Still, it's still out there. But your checklist don't give all your your, your residents like back. No, but you got to do something to have right. people right. 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 You know, you can't just you couldn't. But anyway, so it would just work. So just sort of, you know, working on all these ideas about how we get people a little more involved and how we help people where we can. And some of it, I think, is just partially in the organization, and some of it could be with, with uh, I don't know if we did a day like that. Anybody know what happened with the budget with Brian Shackett's crew? I talked to Brian the other day. Yeah. It's a, 
it's not confirmed yet. We'll say it afterwards. Okay. Uh, just wondering because it was just it was he, all about funding in the budget. He was still working last time I talked yes. to him. He, yeah. he was still working. Okay. All right. Yeah, they were trimming somewhere today. What was it? Yeah. I'm just thinking that that crew could be a great, you know, again when you want to we want to do something major in the fall with some kind of a cleanup day if we can <coughs> use them as well. That's a you won't get them on the weekend. I'd rather see it in the spring. The winter snow's going to cover it. You're going to see it. So. <laughs> yeah, but the spring, we see we already got green up day. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You know, so you've got, that's why I feel you got green up day. So if before you go into the winter, you get it cleaned up, that might be helpful. And I, and I can actually say that uh, I, a few years, green up day is going to be gone. Yeah, but green up day, so, and it's I may be wrong. Hand. The only way you can go up to green up day and have a big dumpster where you can get rid of this, that, and everything you got that don't it have to be in green up bags? Should be. Uh, that's what it started it's, to right. be. I mean you can't bring mattresses and, and personal right. Well, people putting tires and everything out now. Right. That's why they're putting it inside the road because they can't bring it personal. Right. Right? right. Well, yeah, they don't want to pay to get rid of it. So 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 you gotta have a place where people can come to and shoot their stuff that doesn't exactly. fit in a green up bag. But the tire now would be a problem because Kenny Ross that's all them out, you know. I think it'd be better, Dave, believe it or not, to have some something like twice a year. Oh, okay. I thought you just, just to bring your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, Instead well, of throwing it down over the bank yeah. so people have to go down exactly there, but just yeah, bring I, it I here. It's gonna cost us that. so much I money, that, uh, but let the towns get together and dump it off here. Yeah. Exactly. We could do that. I figure I would just you take yeah. it out of economic development. And, and but, you, but the, the people uh, who literally can't do it have your volunteers so that you can go to. And, and again, for some of that stuff, I mean, I know I know people and they say, oh, if I could get rid of the mattress, I said, and they say, they'd pay somebody to take it. So it's not going to be just people that can't afford to do it. There'll be people who'll be happy to make a financial contribution to help, to help do the whole thing. You know, but I mean, it just goes with back what Dave said a few minutes ago. It's so expensive. Yeah, yeah. You know, they try to be honest, but you know, you take somebody that's struggling. And yep. So we're tips. not gonna. Eh, I don't think. I don't know if I want to go to a policy. I don't know if we're ready to go to a policy yet, or we're just. I know we're still into developing. Yeah, yeah. yeah we don't developing. know nothing about it. To developing. Well, one of the one of the key things that would solve some of the concern that Dave has, I think, is that we have various different types of properties in, in Hyde Park. Right. You have public and private. You have roadside. You have sort of the community spots. You know those kind of things. Any project that is developed. It's got to be minor anyway, because there's really no money source for it. It's more the coordination cost of the event or exercise. It would only be done with permission of the landowner. So whether you're dealing with a bank or whether you're dealing with a private person, you always have to work with that person, obviously. We're not going to show up some morning with a bunch of bags and say, we're here to clean up your yard. You know, it's going to be more of an effort. And, it's, and the, the, what the envision paperwork process is paperwork to resolve some of the board's concerns. So you would actually have to have a project proposed, have a form filled out that goes through all the potential costs, who's going to do what, and the time frame for it. And the select board would have to approve that project. So it's not a uh, freewheeling kind of project. You'd have a public comment section with zero, one, or two little projects that are already figured out and presented to you, and you would just say, yes, you can spend $200 on a dumpster or whatever. So it's very, very minimalistic. It's not intended to be a town-wide cleanup thing like Green Up Day, but we can see a, a, one of the examples I can tell you about is the, the, the corner lot on uh, Eden Street right. was used for years as like snow pile place, and the yeah. landowner yeah. said no more, right? So they can't use that. But what was left was a was stone and rock, and it was kind of one of the gateway entrances to the town and village street network. And it really didn't need much work, but nobody had any. The, the residents were more impacted, you know, than the 
the town government. Uh, but if the residents came back and said, hey, we've got a bunch of volunteers and we just need somebody to you know, give us $200 for some flowers and we'll take care of all the work, that corner could have had a different type of corner. And right now there's nobody kind of encouraging that to happen. Right, right. So I think there's some, there's in the policy, why I think that you eventually, if you want to go for it, you would get there, you would have all those various concerns figured out and agree to, and then it's just a program the town does, and there's probably, I can envision three or four different projects a year. <laughs> you know, if you're lucky. The house when you start down Church Street, that the bank owns and is abandoned, and then, you know, to get the bank to say, oh, okay, you can get the mattress and the computer screen and the junk off the porch. Or, yeah, you know, Roger has one up in North High Park, right, which is the, the abandoned, mm -hmm. what's, his, what's his name there, the yeah. duplex in the mobile home. Yeah. The family just is not interested, but they're reachable. And they would be one of those that would likely give permission to go grab a, you know, yeah. a, a yeah. two-yard dumpster or something. And, a, and the neighborhood, Roger leading the way, would have permission to go throw that stuff in a dumpster in the town. And clean it up. Right. Clean it up. Yeah. But, um, I mean, that, know, that's the sort of thing we're thinking. You the know, reverse side of it is it just sits there, and every meeting for the last six months, Mr. Audette comes here and says, that trash pile is still there. When are you going to clean it up, Regency? And I'm like, I'm not touching that trash pile. I don't have permission yet. Yeah. And, and, I ain't and, touching it, and you get permission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody else that looks at it is feeling the same way. And eventually, so, we get in touch with the highway crew and say, can you do this? It's, a, it's an eyesore at the corner of 100 and Grimes, or it's the, the mattress dropped off the Jones farm. Yeah. And the highway takes, you know, two guys in an hour, which is a few hundred dollars to go it. instead of we had a good Samaritan saying, I'll I'll take it, but I'm not gonna spend a fifty dollar tipping fee for that at Casella. Oh if you're willing to go and get it with your own truck, we'll pay you. We'll reimburse you the fifty bucks. Right. Those are the types of it's not meant to be anything too outrageous, but unless you have some town department that does that kind of stuff. Unless we have a policy then we don't have any there's no way, way to do it. Well, yeah, snow has a whole division of people that water flowers all day. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the worst thing is beside the road? Yeah, that's that's exactly right. As long I as we got it, it's campers. Well, but that's and we just sort of need the policy, so it's okay. We've done and get in touch with it it. some of these parties, either the family, but that means I think it's the bank. You know, just to be able right. to do it. I still, think, I still think it needs more work before we can pause. Oh yeah, no, no. In particular, Dave, look at the application. Yeah. idea that is it written up in there that says what we're looking for and how Does it actually it, works right. yeah. multiple steps it has to go through right. and all that stuff so. yeah and that if you have any if, it, if it's a philosophical difference that's one thing but if it's a process point of view i think you can always put that end of it mm -hmm. and we're not going to spend more than a thousand dollars on these silly projects well then you've capped the program and when the thousand's gone we're done for the year that's another way to deal with it yeah the taxpayer risk yeah, how can you cut kids not mine? Exactly. Anyway, so it just because you didn't apply. <laughs> okay. Just want to make sure you continue thinking about it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Good. Okay. Grants and aid. Every year since the agency of natural resources got involved with the roads due to the Clean Water Act, it's been a big thing of neck for a lot of people, including the MRGP. But the legislature and ANR said, hey, if we're going to mess with all these local roads and make them state roads all of a sudden, let's give them the towns a little bit of money every year. So this is a grants and aid program. And they divide it up by the amount of roads that need help. So they've come up with a formula that says every year, High Park should get about $12,000 to do stone line ditches or deburn a roadside or do whatever. And it's a pretty simple process. The regional planning administers the grant. There is a multiple step process that they're still working out. So communication between the state, town, and, and region are still being developed, as I found out with Rob Moore over at Regional Planning, because we were trying to figure out exactly what Rob wanted to see and what the state was expecting the money to be used for and what we're used to doing for projects. And they're not all in line right now, so we're, we're continuing discussions on the details of the grant program. But July 3rd is the deadline to provide any potential roads that might be eligible, then they come out and do site visits and eventually do a grant agreement. But if we miss July 3rd, they take that money, which is $12,000 plus or minus this year, put it into all the other towns in Memorial County. So if you yeah. take it, if you take it, if you don't take it, you lose it, but the other towns will more or less take advantage of it. 
So Mark French suggested that we put a little bit more stone and ditch stabilization effort into McKinstry Hill or Diggins Road, one of those two, and I'm not sure which one would, I don't, you almost meet with regional planning to say which one they thought was eligible, because they're the ones that have to approve the approve release of the money. But that was it, I don't know what sections exactly, those kind of things, but if the board could authorize me to sign the, the July 3rd letter, I'd work with Roger and Mark in the next couple of weeks to pin that down a little bit, and then we'll ask for the 12,000. I don't, like I said, I don't, we only have to come up with a 20% match, so it's not that hard to do on 12,000 when, when we have a, enough money for small road projects. And this would be something that they really want these done by the winter. Ideally, so it's kind of meant to be a quick build thing. People tend to mm -hmm. okay. between pop up projects and quick builds, it's like everybody just doesn't want to get hung up in the bigger, longer, multi year things anymore for these smaller, which is good for us, but we still have to be ready to do it. Uh, last year we got money, 13000 awarded, and we still haven't closed it out yet because we're going through these little details of what's really eligible under various definitions. Yeah. This, is a, this is a no match 20%. 20%. And usually that's uh, a little bit of help. Oh, yeah. 20% could be bringing a load of stone. But that's in kind. We yeah. can do in kind. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Could, like our trucks yeah. getting stone yeah. is, could be the 20% match. Yeah. That kind of thing. So, so that's a, I think that sounds, uh, that's about the best approach. I could. They just sent this note out like two weeks ago. So I used to have to do better about getting projects ready to go. But this is uh, so I, I, be able to tell okay. you. Yeah. I, I'd make a motion to have uh, Ron, work with Ron and Roger on this and come up with the which place, the best place, best better. place to put it. Second, best practice. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. The Sheriff's Department annual contract. Yeah, so the original here that I'll pass around the signature on page two for the budgeted amount. The so we want it to come in. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the uh, the dog warrant I'll pass around too since that is okay. not signed. So two, two signatures, page two and page one. Five bucks. All we all gotta sign it. Yeah. Shut that off. We'll call right back. I ain't gonna shut mine off. Nobody ever calls me. I do. <laughs> okay. But if his is shut off, you ought to be safe, right? I think I'm. Uh, can I just mark that stain from the Sheriff's Department? Sure. Oh. I think it hurts. Huh? I'm saying so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that okay, I'm going to abstain from signing the sheriff's department budget due to conflict of interest. Well, we could just always tell them to not pay you. <laughs> can do that too. So. I think I think we'll go with a I think we'll go with a conflict for you. Uh, okay, you can, you, you're going to miss that one, but you can do. You can do here, and then the fine print we have the dog stuff will come to you if she doesn't have any luck. That's in the fine print on the back. Any wolf hybrids in town now? Any what? Wolf hybrids. Hybrids, I don't think so. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised if I wanted to do them. Do we? Well, they were real popular for a while. They yeah, they were. Faded. Yeah, them and them damn bullheaded things there. Those rock riders. Oh. 
There's a lot of bulls. Well, and pit bulls too. Yeah, pit bull. I'll tell you about this. Story. We had a meeting down the street. Yeah. 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 Okay, the contract for the ball fields. Annual contract, uh, thinking uh, this proposed contract goes to two years for Brock Carey. Both fields recommended by the rec committee, ball fields committee, and. He's the one that's been doing it right long, isn't Yeah. It? Yep. Now that looks like a lot of money to mow, and it is, but but if you just mowed, but he puts mowing down, but he he rakes out all the fields yeah. before every game. Yeah, we and, went through this before. And there's something that with a softball field that the pitcher's mound's going to be so high. And, and so he really takes care of it. He does a good job. Mode. Yeah, yeah. So this is just a request to authorize me to sign the contract. That you we'll make a motion for Ron to sign the contract. So for the okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Well, they look good up there. <clears throat> never been? Mm -hmm. I've never been up here. You didn't go up when they were digging up there just a couple weeks ago? No? Nope. You should. I've, I've taken a trip. <laughs> okay, the courthouse pocket park project. <laughs> a couple of quick updates. Uh, it's not an action item. The concrete person would be involved with the main pocket park, which is 24 feet diameter, uh, right across from the library by the old telephone pad, south side of the street. At the same time, we need to make some repairs at the memorial. The Veterans Memorial has no ADA access to the rear, even though they're adding names to the backside. Mm. And the lake brick that's in front of the memorial towards Main Street is fracturing, chipping. It's not in terrible shape, but it's failing. I don't know what they've been, if the brick itself was bad or if they just let salt sit on it. The walkway down on Main Street has a little bit of a slope, so I'm thinking maybe some of that salt washes off, but it's really flat at the top. The only thing I can think of is the salt's been eating to it. They didn't seal the brick or something went wrong up there, mm. so it's not going to get better by itself. It's probably going to keep failing. So the idea is we take out the, it's like a half circle in front of the memorial, and then put a, about a four foot wide path to the back, and then widen that up to five feet, which is the minimum radius for a wheelchair, in the back side. So people that visit can sort of get there and go back and not have to endanger themselves by getting off in the grass. So those, both of those would happen. The $10,000 grant we got from the Vermont Department of Health had a couple other amenities added in, which is what they're paying for. They're paying for a human dog watering station next to the pocket park. And they're paying for sealing up the, um, for the vegetation and things around, well, the paint of the concrete. And they're paying for that amenities list, which is the short list of things we're adding. What's not covered, which the village has offered to help with, is some of the installation of the water and electric, because there's electric wires and telephone wires where we're going to be digging for the old telephone. And then they'll come in and water up the, the which will be a seasonal watering station, obviously. Um, they'll do that as part of their deal. The highway guys <coughs> don't have a lot, but we may have to strip the area of the grass. The concrete person would come in, and one of the problems we saw today was that there's a six by six concrete sidewalk panel that's right near the state, part of the main sidewalk, that's failing right in front of the pocket park area, and then the next one to it. So there's like a 12 by six section of sidewalk. It's really in bad shape, and it would be pretty almost irresponsible to put brand new concrete and then enter it out. All. Right. So we're thinking at least that 12 by 6 should be opened up. And then there's a question on road salt has chewed away the concrete on the uh, back side of the curb for about 12 to 16 inches back from the curb face. It's all just dirt and stone and rebar and things that are showing through. I don't 
I don't really know what the best fix is. When they put that ramp in front of the courthouse, they did do a little bit of a patch. And that was what, three years ago now, whatever, two or three years ago when they did that little project. Those patches are the same idea. They seem to be holding, but, and it's, I don't know how well it is. It's definitely a temporary type of patch, but right now there's a trip fall hazard in it. We probably should have that same concrete person do something that's a little bit beefier repair. I don't know if that means they dig out the concrete and then put it back in rather than a you know, two-inch skin, which won't last one winter. Um, something's got to be done with that. That's a kind of an add-on project. But as long as the contractor's there, we're thinking we should have to look at that south side of Main Street and sort of tune up a few of the worst spots that are actually safety problems, not just craft or whatever. Have you got any contractor in for yeah. bid? Yeah, bids will be coming out July. They're cheaper to have them do it while they're right there working is to turn around and bring somebody else back in. Yeah. Sure. sure. Yeah. So it, 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 isn't that memorial? Isn't that county property, not town property? Yep, they're all county property. So. so so, so, the rest of the county towns don't have to be involved with the vote or? Well, the, no, no, what's happening is, and we did this last meeting. Yeah, last, last meeting we signed an agreement with the side judges. Oh, yeah, that's right too, okay, right. yep. Right, because so, yeah. right, side judges Perfect. take yeah. care of right. Yep. Right. Yeah, we're all set with that stuff. I remember that. The yeah. thing that's yeah. not resolved though, to get to your point, both the side judges, the VFW, and the Village Improvement Association have all agreed to say, when you need us, call us to get to that yeah. question about yeah. other people that might participate. Uh, one of the things that popped up today, literally popped up as a pop-up project almost, uh, Greg Paz was here, we're looking at this 24-foot diameter hunk of concrete, and we're like, what can you do with that? And in the middle is a eight by eight diamonds. So when you're when you're on the uh, sidewalk looking into the pocket, you'll have the benches and some plantings around the perimeter. But at the inside will be an eight foot by eight foot diamond. It's, it's a square, but it's turned so it points okay. towards Main Street. And Greg and I were thinking that to further engage the community before the concrete person actually does their work, we should send that template blank to the village or Peter Gallo or one of the art folks and say, can you come up with something for that diamond area? Could be just a pattern or it could be Hyde Park written in script or something, but something in that corner. So if you look at it, the way I can explain the one, the one example we saw, it was the same kind of pattern because you have to have the, the uh, frost um, re relief yeah. cuts that go across, that creates a pattern of a grid, usually. Usually, they're, and they, these are eight by eight kind of big squares. And then you take the saw down, and that leaves a square in the middle. One person went through and they pressed a, um, a, a north, south, east, west emblem yeah. right in the middle. But that, very intricate. Probably wouldn't want to pay for that. But So it's an opportunity to, at least in the next month or so, to give some community members a chance yep. to jump in on. But what wasn't it? Morrisville didn't on their sidewalks, cement, and they just put the imprint of bricks on it. Somewhere I went, they parked their sidewalk. I did that. Well, that was done here in Hyde Park at the crosswalks when they did the pavement. Yeah. From the, the library. So, so it looks like brick. Yeah. But, but they pressed pavement. Yeah, but then they still had the stress cracks come. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. You can't do that. So that's one of the options is just to. You could have colored concrete, you could have stained concrete, and you could have pressed or yeah. designs on the top. So without knowing anything other than this one potential, people are going to be looking at this middle of the part. We said, hey, why don't we just send a little, because Greg has a sketch of this, and say, here's your area, come up with something, and we'll, we'll talk to the yeah. concrete person and see if, it, see if it flies with anybody. Of course, the default is just a plain, we'll probably use colored concrete, not do the stain from the top, but we would turn the you know, red brick coloring that gets mixed with the concrete so you don't have a bright, okay, so yeah, bright white. Right. So we're debating that. The, the walkway to the memorial is a red brick walkway up that we don't think should be touched and that we would probably stamp or and use red colored concrete around so it looks like brick, but it's 
Right. Down to right. Williston, they're using green sidewalks, uh, crosswalks. You see that? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Williston, ain't it? I think it is. Yes. The crosswalks are green. That's another discussion. <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's another discussion. As far as the, I just want to give you an update on those two pieces that we're, we're debating what to do in the pocket part of right. concrete. Right. It may end up being white since the courthouse just put everything white. They didn't do anything like brick or any coloring on that. But the memorial, we wanted to get that to be a better better condition for the long term. So that would probably be the red pressed. You want to right. you want to use the red. You don't want to use the stain. No the stain does not work well. It wears off. Yeah. Well, and let's, you know, like you said, some of that stuff, you know, we're, we want to do things for the long term. But, you know, adding maintenance, is the, the highest maintenance thing probably at the, at the pocket park will be people volunteering to maintain the plantings. The, the plantings, right. And then the village is already doing trash and recyclables, which have to be there anyway. And then the, uh, and then the watering station, which would be a twice a year thing, you know, spring, right. spring and fall, turn on and on. So that's the update on those things. I don't have any real action items. And July 8th is a, is the bid. It's so bids, maybe if you're meeting on the on the 15th, will be the first one Monday. Okay. The annual financial management questionnaire. We just have to. Yep. You just got to accept it. This one says received by the select board, so you can say we received it for your information. Right. And Susan would sign the bottom. And that's page thirty-one in our file. Thank you for not putting the pages. <laughs> that's Dave's idea, right, Dave? Yes. So to go along with that report from the treasurer, which is all the statutory duties the state auditor wants to see towns doing across the state. That's not a high park thing. That is a standard report from the all the town treasurers to the select boards. So part of what we've been doing with finance in specific is the finance director. Uh, Allison has written up a quick update memo for the board yep. so you can read about what's going on upstairs in the treasurer finance director town administrator world Summary of the memo is it's a work in progress with some things done, some things left to do. <clears throat> but it seems to be going okay. Yeah, yeah, there's progress. Absolutely. Motion to receive the questionnaire. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Fees for town service. So I'm not recommending any changes on town 
fees. We could look at those, obviously, and try to get in line with what other places are charging or try to get a little bit more from that with revenue to offset taxes. So you can't always do that. On the other hand, you can sort of keep our basic fees, which have been the same for, I don't know, if they've been almost the same for 10 years anyway, and possibly do what Morristown just did, where they ran into a problem with the MSI building. I don't know if you read about that in the paper. So MSI is going to build a huge addition into their warehouse manufacturing, you know, light manufacturing support yeah. system over there. And the Morristown Select Court said, you have to pay $20,000 in fees because there was no cap. Yeah. So this board can do just for goodwill almost to people that are looking at like parking and say, we don't want to get into that position. We're going to cap our residential and commercial fees because it doesn't, processing an application only costs so much. So to charge more than what it really costs is probably not a good thing to have on the books. And that's what we have now is it's 10 cents a square foot no matter how much work there is to it. So not anything too soon, but I just wanted to give you the, kind of those two options. You either look at your fees and do a comprehensive review and try to get in line with other towns and be not out of whack with those folks. You know, on a county basis almost, there's only three or four other towns that charge building permit fees or land development fees. Or you make some tweaks to it. And the, the tweaks I'm suggesting are look at your fee structure and make sure you have some caps on there that really don't make any sense to go through the roof if you end up with a large building. Uh, one big missing piece, which I, I'm thinking is part of a more comprehensive review, is your stormwater fees. And the stormwater fees and the stormwater reserve fund are set up, or, sorry, the reserve fund is set up for the fees that potentially could be charged for land development that actually creates a burden on stormwater are not in place. Uh, okay. For example, the state's thinking about the, or they thought about the per parcel, $6 a parcel, yeah. to fund their stormwater program. We have a stormwater program. We spend you know a million dollars a year on highways, but we have land development right now pays nothing towards those impacts. And most of the stormwater comes down a driveway or onto a town road eventually, if they're not treating 100% of it on site. It would be totally reasonable to have a zero fee if they're treating all their stormwater on their site. If they're sending it to the town road system, then should we have a fee? And I'm thinking that we probably should because we would see it either through a land development project or we'd see it with a highway access permit. I think it should be a fee, then you don't get into the argument, well, it does and it don't. Right. Yeah, the review process would tell you if there's an impact right. off site. Yeah. And almost all projects are going to discharge eventually into a town highway system, and then it becomes the public's stormwater and our responsibility. So anyway, that was just one thing that probably could use some help at some point and look at uh, highway access permits under 1111. We could add a $25 surcharge to every permit since they all involve a culvert or a driveway into a town road and just have a base fee that goes into the reserve fund for stormwater projects. So you're not right. misdirecting it to education like the state likes to do, or vice versa. It's dedicated right. to stormwater fees. Right, because that's what you're, right. Right, so you'd set up that system, and then you would look at the zoning process to say, are you taking care of your stormwater impacts or not? And then if you're not, then you have an additional fee for the town to basically address it. And just by chance, today, we got a letter from Beatrix, an email from Beatrix. And it was just, it was because I was thinking about the fees that we're faced with and what we have to do for mandated. So we have two stormwater projects that we're proposing, at one out front here, one at the bottom of Sylvain. And they both include use of the state right away, just because they're at the, the low point. So we proposed those designs. Uh, Pete from Moyle County Conservation District did all the engineering work. He got a grant to help. And it's really, it's a, it's a stormwater project. It's right. not a town project necessarily. It's not just for Sylvain Hill. It's not just for Route 15. But it was a stormwater project which, and water quality, which is where Pete Danforth of the con conservation is focused on. He, he almost doesn't see property lines. Of course, when we go to the 1111 process with the state of Vermont, they start to see property lines and maintenance costs and all this other stuff because they don't really have a problem. You know, they don't have stormwater problems until they're almost forced to do something. So when you're proactive with V-Trans, 
lots of hesitation. You know, I'm, I'm actually surprised they're talking to us. They're actually communicating with us on what their concerns are. A lot of times you just get a no, no, we'll take care of it. You don't hear about it for 12 months, 24 months. This one, they're going back and forth with us, mostly because of Pete and the Clean Water Act are raising the bar a little bit on this. So the email we got today was exactly how much of the watershed is town, how much of the watershed is private, and how much of the watershed is state right away. So you can see where they're headed. They're, they are going to say if 90% of the stormwater doesn't generate from Route 15, then we don't want any part of it. You guys go deal with it on your own property. But there's really no other better spot. So we've already done the. So it's like redoing the project again. You can see why things take time. Right, to get them there, right. So internally, I sent an email to Andres, who's our consultant, and I said, that's a, sort of an easy response. Those systems that we're proposing are in the right of way. So 100% of the stormwater is VTRAN's responsibility at those two points. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, yeah. once it gets to, just like they, you know, private landowners will tell us what, where we started this conversation, it, once it hits your right of way, it hits your property. Uphill people say the same thing, they'll downhill people. Once it's on that downhill property, it's that downhill property owner's water problem, more in most cases, unless there's a major change in the quantity or, or the flow rate. <coughs> So I don't know where that's going to go. I just want to let you know that the stormwater thing is percolating at a whole bunch of levels from a little, really simple subsurface system that nobody's going to see, which is what we're trying to do up here, which will benefit multiple you know, entities, from private to public to, to a town, you know, state. So I don't know where it's going to go. Did that come from District 8 office? It came from right away. It, it came, came from, from right away? Yeah, wait to month earlier. The, the district office knows what, you know, the, I think they fine tune how far they look at things, and then you're in month earlier. They don't, I don't think Jim and those guys want to deal with that kind of stuff. No. But anyway, that's what, it's all positive so far. I'm just telling you, we're, we're, right. we're, we're, we're trying to justify a project which on the surface seems to make sense, but then you have to walk it through with five or six different agency people right. Right. and get everybody on board. So no fee adjustments for zoning unless you want to go there. Uh, but I think the stormwater and a cap are probably something we should do at some point. If we were having a more rapid development, then my uh, re the recommendation would be to speed up the work in fees. But we're just not seeing it enough to push that. We should many, get it in ahead of time, but not, not an emergency mode. But how many zoning permits have you issued already for this year, 2019? Uh, geez, I think I'm only at 20. I? 20. But that's, I just issued a small garage today as one. You know, a bunch of those are, five or six are access permits. Yeah, you got three or four for one person up here in Gasper. Yeah, I think so Jeff, and Jeff and his family. Uh, Jeff who? Jeff Emerson's. Emerson's. Yeah, and there's no new development going right. on yet. It was just part of the, right. part of the development. <coughs> but we do have four. I think there's four or five houses, maybe, so it's not that bad, but it's still not, they're, they're not there's, there's no mega mansion, no big commercial projects that are in the grand list of which. McMahon comes off another 25% on July. So, so they'll be paying 50? He starts 75 this year. He starts 75 this year, good. So next year will be his 100, he'll be paying 100% of the bill. What? With MSI and, the, and their big village property, as they develop that, would that run into fees with us? <clears throat> village. Just the village, not the town. Yeah, the only time that they potentially run into a stormwater fee is if you had the system set up for the 1111 permit. Okay. You know, or an impact on the public road. Provision that the village would issue the zoning permit, but if they were going to send any water, then we'd have to have an impact fee on the sorts at the road. But we don't have that set up yet. Right. So, so okay. right now, a lot of people, even if residents, they'll put a pump in their basement and send the water to the curb. You know, that's a solution that they have. There's no fee for that, but it 
it's one of the contributing factors to the road storm. Minor, it's very minor. But, so we have to have a bunch of things that are exempt. And then the other ones that you can exempt. Okay, that would two more. Right. The other, right. Here, if they're providing a big public benefit, you could exempt. And they say, hey, we right. know we're going to impact the municipality, but we're bringing this, so can you exempt that fee? Right. Yeah, those are, those are, that's why you have to really think about the, before you go there. Okay. Right. On the stormwater fees, it's a bigger, a little bigger project. So, uh, South Burlington and a couple other municipalities have skipped the debate and they went right to the stormwater division, the stormwater department. Well, Mike, the, would it would it make sense because you a you've got the planning commission as well. This is an opportunity to pull the just a, a couple of people. So here's what we're thinking about to have an initial conversation about this and and see if a couple of folks from the planning commission and the DRB want to sit down with a couple of us and with you to say, here, what, what does everybody think about this? You know, because if you got, if all three boards think it's a good idea, we're in good shape. <laughs> yeah, it's hard, it's hard, I think it's going to be hard from a, from almost a political perspective to say we want business and charge more fees. Right, right. But the stormwater thing the is... The stormwater right. thing is a taxpayer issue. Right. And the taxpayers can say, you know, at whatever cost, we don't want to see any more cost. But then they might prohibit some new investment if the fees and the process are complicated. Right. So it's a good, it's a yin and yang type of thing where if you're really being harmed by stormwater development and things, you react somehow. It's like we shouldn't keep having all the stormwater projects go in and charge you all these taxpayers, you know, our storm. That's what the MRGP did as an, on a statewide level. It boosted everybody's stormwater bill right. Right. through their right. highway bill. Right. So, okay. Anyway. Let's, first of all, let's deal with Kim's with the, see she gave us the memo. And yeah, did you see, I read that, I didn't see any action item on there. Is that I, information? I, well, I, I, I think. It's not like they're all statutory to me. Yeah, yeah it does look like it's all, that's, this is the one we just, it's like an FYI. yep, we got it, right. Because I read it twice trying to figure out if the board needed to take And there's nothing that action. she has been doing that she has to change because of these changes. Yeah. Okay. I, I yeah, I think, I think, it, I think it's, it's just to, so we know. Okay. Okay. Okay, 14. <coughs> Sign of funds. Okay. Assignment of funds is a accounting tool which the board has used in the past. I think the last time might have been uh, assigned 3500 from the Grange budget to the next year's budget. That was about two years ago, maybe. Uh, this year, in order to have that money available next year, after July 1st, Nobody is proposing anything exact. Mark has started to look at his budget, and he might have some recommendations. After tonight's orders, we'll have a almost an end of the year report after this round of orders goes in. So tomorrow, when the when the bills are paid, um, we can fine tune the highway budget a little bit to see what exactly happened. You know, the, the salt budget, for example, was. I think he, he under, underspent it by like three dollars. You know? So he did really well considering how other towns blew their salt money. Right. But on other things like heavy equipment repair, that got hit by the 12 international, and you know, then we had some other ups and downs with some grant projects that are showing in his in his highway budget that he had no control over. And we're getting some revenue back eventually. But during that little gap between your expenditure and your revenue for my grant, you have a what looks like an overspent budget for highway. So without these, without those grant revenues and these bills going through, we're not going to have a good picture to see if Mark Mark's request. Um, right. He had a request to assign thirty thousand dollars from culverts to next year. But I can't tell the board tonight if that's within the budget to do. <clears throat> now, it doesn't make a lot of sense to not buy it because he needs
needs culverts right. for the summer work plan. But we need to buy them as he needs them, not to dump stockpile them. Yeah, so what do you do with the 30000 this year? Oh, well, I thought you would yeah, you turn, uh, push it, uh, turn it over into the um, stormwater. Yeah, you can, just, you can transfer that money to the stormwater reserve fund, and you can have that 30000 in that year for any year's purchase. If you assign something, there's an intention to spend it in 2020. And then you, at the end of 2020, <coughs> a year from now, you'd say, is that money spent? But stormwater, you already had the money for the stormwater, too, don't you? Mm -hmm. well, that stormwater is going to be a grant, no? Which well, might... we do have some coming in, but we've, we've got the fund for the variety of things. That yeah, this, what he's talking about is taking the value of that 30000 in stormwater culverts that he intended to buy and put in a stockpile and taking that cash only and put it into the reserve fund for future use. Right. Black so if something comes up, there's money there. <laughs> Black top. Well, that's the problem. It's the, the best intentions of the highway budget is culverts are needed at 30 something thousand dollars and all of a sudden you don't need it? Okay, let's put 10000 a year in culverts. See what I mean? So you, yeah, I know. you can't just so at least the stormwater would mark or track that in the reserve fund and know that he has 30000 under the reserve fund that are intended to go to All right. those sorts of projects. Yeah. Because something major can happen and suddenly you need the money and oh, you yes. don't yeah, you know, and you don't and you don't have the money. This way you've <clears throat> see what he wouldn't be able to do is that, which is say, Oh yeah, let's take, you know, the twenty thousand out of the Stormwater and just do more hummix. That's not that's not a use of the stormwater reserve. But that's right. a use of paving line. Right. So the voters could do that though. They could move money from the reserve funds. Out. Yeah, we got we got the you town wanted. meeting and you saw you were getting like it doesn't look as though we need this. So to take and you're not taking it out, take some of the money out and move it. You can do it then. So that's where that's where the assignment of funds is right now. Is that if the we're not board, ready to assign? If right, if the board could meet on a morning towards the end of the year, set the tax rate, and do the assignment of funds, then that would be a good housekeeping thing for the for July first. And I'll go up and see Mark and sit down, and we can. Yeah, once Alice introduces the next yep. kind of budget to actual report, then you'll be able to see better kind of what. What you're up against, um, but Thursday, Thursday the 27th, I think, is a morning potential that gives us enough time. Twenty seventh. I'll just check my calendar. I won't be here that week. Don't matter. I'll be all right. Barrett Jackson. Concert. Car auction. Oh. Down the, uh, uh, not the guy I got. Yeah. Going by Mustang. I don't know. We're going to go down just where I've always wanted to go. Oh, okay. Hmm. On this 27th work for other people? When is it? Wait. Yeah. 27th on Thursday morning. <coughs> um, uh, June? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, that week after this yeah. week. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. It's starting to be next Thursday already. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm like. I'm going, okay, does that. Um, what time? Easy, uh, easier for you at 9? 9, 8, whatever works for you guys. I don't. Uh, you had kid things, but you don't have that. Nope, school's out. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday wouldn't work for nobody. Morning. Uh, morning. Yeah, I work Tuesday morning. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Tuesday or Thursday. Mm -hmm. Huh? Well, this. Just... Well, if you want to be there Tuesday or Thursday, I don't know what yeah. they're Tuesday morning, I, I'm leaving somewhere around ten. But we could do the we could do Tuesday the twenty fifth at eight thirty. Shouldn't take us a long time, right? 
No, it's like oh, it's almost can. over the phone thing yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah we can do, we do it from the road. road. You, Dave? I can, as long as you don't take a long time, because I've, uh -huh. I've got to work for the Sheriff's Department. Well, too. he said we can do it over the road. I can do it over the phone, on the road? Yeah. Perfect. Well, going yeah. south, you should have service. Yeah. So, right. So, so are, we, are, the, are we back on the 27th? So you can be back yeah. on the 27th. Yeah, the 20, 27th is about the time we'll get the school rates, too. That's why I was trying to pick something closer to the end. Okay. And that's right. Okay. Do anything with those? Those are automatic. But it's good for the board to know it. What, what time What time on the 27th? 8.30. 8.30, okay. Okay. You'll send that a reminder on that. Yeah. Okay. Review the minutes. I did. Plugging our way forward slowly and surely. <laughs> Ten. I just turned that back on to see the calendar. Oh. Must be want something bad, huh? So I didn't count ten. You see who that is? Yeah. Send back to five. That was just a cold beer. Cheaper. Oh. <laughs> what does he want me so bad for? You know what he's calling me for? Probably tell me that bear's up there. Yeah. Somebody make, make a motion. motion accept the minutes of April 15th and May 15th special meeting and May 20th monthly meeting. You got three rooms in there. Second. Uh, just a minute. You. Just a minute. Roger and Sue can't vote on the fifteenth because we you weren't here. We weren't there. That special fire meeting. That's we had. special oh. meeting. Right. So you two can. So I'll put it this way. I make a motion to to uh, accept April fifteenth and May twentieth annual select board meeting. Okay. I'll second that. Gotcha. Um, okay, yep. Yeah. I'm going to do another one for the special one. Okay, you've got to vote on it. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now you can do your favor. Now, now we'll need a, uh, I'll make a motion to accept this special April 15th meeting, fire meeting we had. And that would be Roger and Roger Rowley and myself. I'll second it. All in favor? I'll aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Right on the ball. Oh, he's a sharpie. Okay, we'll sign these here. Hey, Ron, did you send the elk this month the uh, invoices? 
There, there was something. Let me see. It was in an email. I didn't happen to get it, do you? Friday. Okay. I didn't get it. Friday. Did you get it? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Go away. Well, if I could turn this back on without it ringing. Without costing five bucks. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, we'll give, we'll give him an exemption. Couldn't get it on your flip phone? No, couldn't on my computer either. That thing flips too. <laughs> See, I didn't have any problem. You got it? <laughs> you want to get that version? It was right in the entryway for me. It was all printed out for me. A copy of, of the invoices? Yeah. yeah have a computer. But you got, a, you got it in print form? Yeah. How else you want me to get it? <laughs> it's for San Francisco. Yeah. No. I don't see it. <clears throat> yeah, I think it didn't get out. None. Main Street and Church Street. Oh, so I signed your place, excuse okay. me. Okay. I didn't get it. See? See? You want it? See? You really want a chair. Yeah. That's not a problem. I thought I didn't get it. Well, so anyway, the plan is, just for your information, that they go out every Thursday night or Friday morning. So if yeah. you're not seeing it, by then it's a problem. And it's, yeah. Because I have it right here. Just I didn't get it. No, no, I don't see it going out SD? Yeah. Huh? $817,000. Should be the quarterly payment. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's quarterly payment. How much? $817,625.16. Cheap enough. something else for now. News goes off. That's a fire truck. That's high, not tight. No, I thought we were supposed to get a new truck in July. Get the town truck. Yeah, we'll get it in July. Yeah, but I don't like the idea of running that. that if Ryan's truck is so temperamental. I take see him run it. And why, did, why did he need to run it? But, well, they did. And they, got, they put a lot of money in it, didn't they? Roger. Park it. They have now. Oh, good. Let's shut the door. The horse is gone. <laughs> yeah. 
don't make any sense to put money in a truck that you're not going to own. Well, we had to fix it before we turned it in because we were going to get charged for it. But well, we didn't run it. Done. 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 Done and it said something. Okay. Need a motion to. Make a motion to accept the town orders. Need a second. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Here we have. Uh, other business. I got a um, I got a long email from Kim and the village folks had talked with her as well about security in the building. This building? Yeah. Yeah. And um, and the concern was uh, obviously had to be had to be there was another incident so there was a concern about you know how safe we are or not and a, a um, and I don't, I don't know if we've talked about security in this building and do you want to just, again, there's no, you know, that's a road you start down that is, we had, and, and one of the things we talked with them upstairs about was one time this year we had the, the man who was so terribly upset and left, you know, and um, uh, I talked with him and I said, you know, any time someone comes in and it's you know just don't don't get into it with them and just ask them please to leave and if they don't want to then you just pick up the phone and call the sheriff yep. and, that, that, and tell them that's what you're going to do and don't get excited and don't get you know um, and so do you want to go to panic buttons do you want to go and I, I don't know if this request is coming before or after they've been um, I'm curious as to what conversations you've had about it in the past I have the. I have my thoughts about this, and it's just I'm curious as to what you all think. I have personally heard anything about it whatsoever. No, well, Kim, they just talked about it, and Kim sent me a long email and wanted us, so I did said um, I will bring it up at the. With the sheriff's department so close, that's. You know, you got to. Are you going to get into in the front with bulletproof glass and la 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 la? Which I think didn't they have? Was there bulletproof glass here one time? I don't know if it was bulletproof. The, the, the original clerk's office before the renovation back in <coughs> yeah, I had, had something of like <coughs> closure at the front lobby. I'm not sure what it was because it wasn't here, but something like cla glass or plexiglass. The town of Johnson has an enclosed area. You have to walk, you know, speak through a hole, but their side door is always open to get, to get into the office. So, <laughs> kind of, kind of man, you know, it depends on how you want to almost deal let's, with it. Let's put it this way: of all the towns I've gone through to get copies of deeds and whatever I need to pick up, over the number of years, I have never seen anything any different than what we have upstairs. I can't, I did a lot of years in the state house, and we did some pretty dicey issues that made people, and they periodically would come up with, you know, we need, I, um, I understand that the world is different, people are more nervous, um, I think you're right with the sheriff right here, um, again, if anything were happening and you're over in the village or start the village, you know, to pick up the phone, and dial 911 would have somebody here immediately. I think in reality, the, um, I mean, if something horrible happened, we'd all feel bad, but I, I don't, I was not supportive of making things more complex at the state house that is certainly under a lot more stress, fear, everything else um, than, a, than a town office is, and certainly the town office in Hyde Park. So I, uh, appreciate particularly after there's an incident people feeling nervous but I I would not in good conscience spend Hyde Park taxpayer dollars on something that I think uh, is a is a minimal risk really? you know I, th I think um, I think the things they do to make the schools 
more safe, so you need to go in. I understand doing all those sorts of things. I think schools are at much higher risk of, uh, of something bad happening, so wanting to control access into your schools more carefully um, and having plans so if something bad happens that I know we have done, um, people know how to respond, but I don't, um, I am personally not supportive of, of uh, I mean, I think if, if we wanted to invite the sheriff to come out and, and, and talk to everybody in the office about, you know, these are the things, and if something like this happens, here's what is a, is a, here's a safety thing, um, having to talk about that sort of stuff makes sense to me if that would make people feel more secure, but I don't. I think I agree. There's not a lot of money at any given day here. No. Well, and it's, you know, people are coming in and it isn't about the money. It's about somebody being really angry and coming in with a gun and, and shooting people. I mean, that's what's going on in the world. None of this is about money right. in any of these cases. It's about somebody with, you know, with emotional issues coming in and Look at that guy, you hit the power hole, that's wrong. Yeah, yeah, well, but that's, I mean, that's sort of exactly, you know, and that's the sort of thing you think back and that, you know, and they get nervous with or somebody comes in and is really, you know, you know, is, is really hot that it's, and, it, and again, so many bad things are happening in the world today that I understand why people are sitting in public. I, we had, when I worked in the governor's office, they do, and, and lots of big public buildings now are doing, you know, if something happens and there's alarm, how you, you know, you shelter in place and all the things you do. And again, hearing some of these stories that obviously bigger public buildings are all now doing this and here's how you shelter in place. And so with the, at the, at the, in the governor's office and on that floor did a shelter in place and they will randomly do a drill to see how you do. We all got killed, <laughs> the first one through, you know, because yeah. it was somebody, there's another door and somebody knocked on it and the chief of staff opened the door. And there's a trooper yeah. standing there, you all just died. Hey, if you want to you go know? in there, yeah. you go in there, you can go out there and I stay else. Well, you mean check? That's, that's right, you Nobody know, so, you. so I've been I... Out every year from field day to that right. right. And, and you just walk in and you walk in anywhere. So, so I, I mean, and I, I think people I are certainly. I couldn't believe it, really. Yeah. It was the first time I went down there. Certainly, you're becoming Nobody much more secure. Nobody at the door or nothing. Just no, no, it, it's you know, and and it, I, I think from a uh, political perspective, I know when they started in Montpelier and doing, and now up in the in the Pavilion Building, they put um, bulletproof glass all around the governor's up some time ago. Because of the reality in the small state is if somebody really wanted to, the governor or any of our elected officials, including any of us, they'd just meet you in the supermarket. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're such a small state that people know where people are. Right. You know, it, it's a very different environment, mostly for the better, I think, than, a, you know, than big abstract cities and big giant corporations that have 2,000 people working there. So... So I don't, but I told them I'd bring them up, and yeah. I, I, again, I, I appreciate their concerns, and we'll um, So they've got one, one incident all the time for years. Yeah, no, I'm sure they, they had people mad or hot over taxes right, right. and stuff like that. No. Yeah, no, there's never been any. No. You know, somebody coming in being loud and noisy and, you know, and, and, and they, and Join again, my world. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, it, it really is exactly. And and that was in in all of those cases, the person apologized. Yeah. You know, because it it is, and and just reinforce for upstairs with anybody. If you're not comfortable, <clears throat> then you call the sheriff and you get their name, and and the sheriff will go out and have a conversation with that person. And I, I don't think you can be much more effective than that. Right. You know, say it's just here. Here's how. Yeah. I agree. Okay. So. Okay. Annual pay adjustments for town employees. That's that two percent. Same as the budget amount. Yeah. Yeah. Make them up in the week. 
make the annual adjustment to the town employees as voted on by taxpayers. Okay. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Uh, to go along with that, just for your information and use, whatever. Right. So there's town employees are broken up to various categories. Some are flat in the sense that they have a set rate, and then there's other ones that get two percent, and there's uh, another uh, sort of range. So, for example, the, the listers had a previously determined amount. The, all three listers agreed to set the two part time, part time people at 14 and push Julie up to 18 plus annual cost of living. So, that's, a, that's one of the split departments. The uh, fast squad set at $11 per call. Right? So there's a whole bunch of stuff in there that I put down in one page for you. So if you have a question and you kind of wonder what the deal is with that person, you can see that in this little cheat sheet. Slightly, we had a successful completion of uh, probation period for Allison, and I'm going to have Susan sign the end of probation letter. Uh, more work to do, of course, with the new person in a new position, but the progress made in some continued training or what we're planning on uh, that position to help the board get some better reports and more forecasting of sorts, which we don't really do much of right now. So it was just a completion of the 90-day. Congratulations. New homeowner, too. She's bought her house on Friday. Where? Uh, Johnson. Okay, this is this is the one for Dale. Dale, yeah, oh, that's the letter. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. Okay, yeah, I want to, sorry, confusing you. That I need to get done too. So yeah. Get it all. Okay. Right. That's a separate one. But there's a. Oh, I think it's in your box. That's what this. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So you can do that later. Right. I'll make a note that it was successful. Yeah. Here. Okay. I'll stop in tomorrow. And, get and then Dale's the one that I want to talk about for a second. Right. Okay. So every year we hire seasonal workers at the highway department and to not raise a conflict with the union contract which says part-time employees are eligible for union or may be eligible. We have people that come on and off the seasonal and we may hire back or we may not. So it's totally even Reno, Michael Reno who did winter plowing will still ask him towards October are you on board again or, or not. And each time we'll issue a new letter of hire. So the one that Susan has is for Dale Nolan that will do the roadside mowing for a couple right. weeks. The suggestion I have for that is to set the seasonal people's wage at 16. So Michael Reno was 16 last winter. Mm -hmm. This is an issue for But the others are like 1540 and 1586. And they got out of whack because we were applying the 2%. But it, if you have a seasonal person coming in, there should be a wage set for that job. Right. And there was a little discussion about the winter operator, whether that's something that could be stepped up over time if they're really performing well and maybe to keep them, they're not going to, they, they would need $18 an hour. Okay. Whatever, sure. whatever it is, we're just setting, we would set summer and winter right now at 16. But each time somebody's hired, you could have a discussion about how much is in the budget and can we afford to spend a, a little bit more. Now, as long as we have people coming back at 16, it's not a market problem. 
you know, if we if we were getting anybody interest, we'd have a market problem. That nobody wants to work for 16 bucks an hour. But Dale's letter is set 16 hours as a as the base for seasonal people. If the board wants to change that, that's something we should talk about, obviously, going forward. But um, 16 seems to be a number that gets people to come back for those two week projects. Gonna be more than two weeks if we want to budget him six thousand dollars. Sixty-six hundred dollars. That's your that's your fifth man, seventy-five percent funded. Right? Right. Yeah, the three part-timers. Here, 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 here's my. Is this what we paid or what we could pay? No, you. What you're paying is sixteen dollars an hour, and that's the budget of maximum of okay. eight hours. Right. When you say three part-time, you got. Reno and Dale, who's the third? Blaine. 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 Oh. Blaine's left. Oh. Well, let me tell you, at sixteen dollars an hour, that's thirty-three hundred, a uh, thirty-three thousand two hundred eighty dollars a year, right? Uh -huh. Huh? How would you say? Thirty-three thousand two eighty. David, the shortcut, right? You double the hourly, right? And at three zero. Now, trick. now, doing a part time more at sixteen dollars an hour for eight hours a day, and, and this 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 winter plowing thing got blowed all out of friggin' proportion this year because he was hired to do the plowing, but he, I can see that we can't say come in for four hours and. We have to give him 40 hours, I understood that, but he was getting 50 and 60 hours overtime, and don't tell me that it snowed every day because it didn't snow every day. So it's cost us more money. I think it might be the time that we look at the fifth man and, and not have the season. Yeah. I've said that since I got yeah. on the board. You know, it, it's not... I know. Because right now we're paying 23296 Yeah, but then, uh, remember, though, they don't get no benefits. Right. Now, now that's, that comes into... into so you got to take... What, you got a $30,000 hole. You right. got to take the benefit the other guy's going to get, too. I no, just, it's just a, just a thought out there. It's a, well, it's a bu the budget season's coming up in, right after summer. It won't be long before you can sit down and drill into those numbers a little bit and see if you can make, you know, pros and cons to everything. But I think the part-time summer help a lot of summer we didn't pay, we we didn't pay this amount of money. Shows on here. Well, if we had a budget sheet, I could tell you we we could see what the. No, we could. the maximum that they could spend. So the rate out yeah, when he worked when he worked a little overtime and all that. So he was, based, the budget was okay because he was using some of that. Summertime, if you want to call it, the wages that were budgeted for summer that he didn't use. Not intentionally, I think it was just a, it, it's a. Yeah, just the way the budget out. works out. It's the way it worked right. out. Right. Yeah, so you got money left over here and it got spent but over there. But if he's going to put a fifth person on to match the highway schedule, that's not what we budget for. We don't budget for all those guys to work the same hourly overtime. And yeah. if, if you put a fifth person on all summer, right now we're down to four plus the part timers for the summer ones. Your 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 costs aren't that much more because of a lot of the costs in the winter is that overtime, mm -hmm. which we do budget for, but we don't budget as much as what he worked because he was working the regular schedule, which is 250 hours of overtime. Right. We only budget for 125. Mark didn't realize that till it was a little late in the year. So anyway, so there is something to look at there. The 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 gain in work is going to be pretty close to the same because those two people take up a lot of time on the tractor yeah. that now we can pay benefits for if you hire them as a fifth person. We don't have that added cost to the mower. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So this is where you get the back and forth between contracting it out and hiring the part-time person without benefits and hiring a person to do the same work with benefits. There's three different categories there. And then we have a mix right now. So whenever you miss, it's an action-reaction question. If you do this, then you're going to have this. It takes a little well, time to think about it. We also have the issue we need to settle tonight um, of of when it's our 
when it's a part-time person, but they get called up under the contract, you have three hours, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. minimum of three hours. But, 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 but a part-timer is not under contract, not under the union. No, they aren't under contract, but if they get called out, and again, this is the case because either there is someplace and it's closer, or there, we, we are in we would be in violation of the contract if we called them out because they're cheaper. See, we can't do that. Right. So, so if the person gets and, and again, that's where well, what's the? That's where we have to be careful. And when they get called out, are they called because it was trees down and it was closer up to Craftsbury and he was right there and came and did it? Then I would say we got to give them the three-hour minimum. Because if, if, if again, because it's not, it's not legal for us to call him out because he's cheaper. So if he's, if he's if not going to well, hit. hit that, was that three hours a Hyde Park ruling or a union ruling? Rule. Union. Okay. Well, then, then, right then, don't, then, then don't call a part timer out, call a union value. Can't. Maybe you can't. They, State a nail on that. You can't call out the union guy. Well, sure you. You, you can't call out the prior part timers. timers. I didn't say that. I, that's what right. I said. He's, he's saying call out the call out the union guy. Don't call out the part timer. Yeah, that's what we have to do. Right. Well, right. well or, but this was kind of this one incident was a, kind of an emergency. So that's why. Well, well, but is the, the part-timer, if you give them the three-hour minute, if you pay them the same, it's all right to get the part-timer, right? Right. But you can't call them out and pay them less. That's the deal. And we've a couple of times been called out, and because he was part-timer, he didn't get paid the minimum. So we, we owe him, as long as we pay the mid, as long in this kind of a situation, we've got to treat that part-timer just like it's covered by the union or else we're, it's perceived as trying to get around the union, which was not the case at, no. at all in this case. He was, the, he was, in a couple of cases, he's been absolutely the right person to call. But then when put in for the three, we said, no, because you're not in the union and it's not paid. And I said, well, you're no. Still, you still could get in the bind too and still complain about it. Sure, the union, really? guys, the union guys still don't complain that you didn't call them. Yeah, they could, but again, that hasn't... I mean, that, that wasn't the case why we did it. Right, right. But the, the rules are the rules, and they don't care. No, you're right. But if you right, have two union got wrapped up and complained, they didn't get called out instead of calling him out. Right. You would still be in violation. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't complain, so you're all right. So it could go either way. Yeah, I think the complaint, you're talking about uh, complaint with the union contract would be more evident and more acute if Mark never called the union guys. I think it gets a little bit less legal if you spread out the demand and see who's closer and do some yeah, random to choices. Sense to call. Yeah, right. yeah, right. You yeah. do some like a rotation almost. I don't think it'd be run to follow and never call the union guys. But part of the problem we have, I think, is the fairness between the union and non-union. Right. And if it, it, the three hour three hour minimum is one issue. Maybe that's the biggest issue, and everything else that's a little different between union and non-union is fine the way it is. There, there should be a little difference there, but right. the call-out seems to be the one that's I, kind of risen to the top. I, yeah, I, I think we have two call-outs that we owe him for. Well, you, you have a policy. Well, you have a policy change. We owe him for because he's right because he he came out, but he didn't get paid. But there wasn't in the anything in the, the contracts or stuff that he was going on, so we don't owe him. Anything we do would be from here forward, not from here backwards. Yeah, unless you go retroactive on your policy. Well, we can right? go retroactive, but the union could nail us. No, Why could the union nail us? It's not our union. union. Yeah. No, 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 because, because they didn't get called. That's what I'm saying. See, that's, that's No, that's not right. So. Okay. That's not right. No. The only thing that Mark talked to me about was a couple times where he submitted to me a timesheet with three hours on it for Mark French. Right. And I said, I don't have anything saying to pay you anything more than the one or one and a half hour that you responded. And he was like, well, 
three out. That makes sense. I thought we had. I don't. Discussion. I don't get it. I no. thought they had the right. discussion yeah. before the union contract. John Borman was here. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And the board was in pretty agreement that three hours was a good number to focus right. on for call out, and it got put into the union contract. It didn't get put into the personnel policies for non-union. Hmm. So that Mark felt it was like a hanging chat or just something that wasn't left undone by the board. But I, I reject, I, he did not get paid for the three hours. He got paid for his time that he worked, which is what the policy says. Right. So they, uh, that's right. I mean, I, I can see that. I can't see it the other way. It just don't make sense to me. Does it you? It don't make sense to work an hour and a half and get paid for three. <laughs> to me. But anyway. But if they come in and work for an hour, one they... One of the biggest differences that we ended up with post-union was right. the right. call. Right. So you know, in, in my French's part, and I'm not saying not not worth it, because he is, but that's no difference in the private sector having a manager on salary and your help on hourly. You get paid the same no matter what you do, Right. Even though the fact how many hours you put right, in, too. You have to stay for a couple of hours after work. Well, the salary guy don't get it, but the elderly guy does, right? Right. What's the difference? Is that for him to sign? Yeah. Okay. Who? Oh. <laughs> Not want to take anything <laughs> away from anybody, it's but that's... It's initial for you at the top. That's, the that's the way it is. At the, at the top of the memo, if they can have a vote. Yeah, to vote. <laughs> huh? And I don't know about the law book, but I can't yeah. see yeah, going back and paying people. An we'll Bye. Okay. So in all this, because we <laughs> this is all about Dale. Yeah. So we yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did we? Yeah. We did. So um, I need a motion that the starting makes sixteen an hour. I'll make that motion. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? And when's he going to start? Today. Really? <laughs> Since no, it's June no, 17th. We, I no. want to I want to talk first on that. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. I got one up there. Okay. Hi, uh, I don't think Roger heard that. Maybe I was telling. Oh, he just didn't vote because he was absent. Oh. Okay. okay. Class one town highway discussion. The report from uh, at some point in the near future to, to have the idea of reclassifying Route 15 to allow for transportation enhancements. Um, at the, I was said I was sure I remembered how we thought about this, but yeah. they wanted us to be clear, so I said okay, I'll bring it up again. So did our, is the town interested in taking? I, I'll house? make it very clear. No, no. <laughs> no. Well, the, the reason exactly what I said. The reason why yeah. you had to revisit this, it wasn't an oversight. Du Bois King was asked a couple months ago, who's our consultant engineer, to do a study on the annual maintenance cost as a class four or a class one town highway where the state would share maintenance costs with the town, would give the towns all the right to do improvements in the road. So they did their study and they found out that the town would net benefit from a cost perspective because we get more grant money for, we get double, almost double the class two money by $356, but they didn't put any value on the headaches or any other rates. Right. But from a pure costing out the expense to the revenue increase, it was a net plus to the taxpayers, but not a heck of a lot. Right, that's one of those, this is $300, no, this is not worth it. <laughs> this, is, this is the way to start to open up the door. That's yeah. right. <laughs> that's what that is. Exactly. That's right, right. however, they yeah. were asked to check it out, and we now know that technically we would have three hundred dollars extra. And, and now, you know so are we interested? And do we work? We are still not interested. Thank the you very consultants much. Consultants' numbers are not correct as well. So right. They're low. Every time you get three yeah. quarters of an inch on that belt, there you go. Okay. Um, 
Sorry. No, I'm not. Let me see. We do. Are we going to need the executive session? Are we? I don't think. Uh, I have one general thing that I, I got one. Well, I I'm got I one. I don't think it's executive session. session, but it's more of a question for Dave. Yes. Oh. Uh, we need to go into executive session. Do, do we? Oh, we're going to. Okay. So before we go in, let me just say, we um, I to like. MSI, Ron, you sent me the information about the big tax credit thing, historic building. So, but you go get it one second session. Don't waste more time. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got all right here. Ron, Ron is ever doing really good. Uh, sent some information that could be very helpful for restoring historic buildings, whatever. So for MSI. I shipped it to MSI Im immediately, and they were like, and they are all over this. And it looks like um, a real opportunity for them to get some a good chunk of money. And what they're saying is what would help move that project forward tremendously is to have the cost of sprinkling the entire building picked up by this program. Well, what and, the spring? Uh, the, for the you know the old hotel, yeah. So and and to get that and to turn it into good commercial space for anything that he's going to do with it, a major cost is sprinkling a system, a big building like that. And um, and they and I, I shipped it to them and they checked it out and, um, and they were told like um, you guys this is a this is a great thing to apply it for. So they're going through the application that's due the first of of, uh, of July. And uh, one of the things they want, because this has sort of come up through the, the Better Connections grant that we have, and uh, they've sent me, and I haven't looked at it, but to do a letter from the select board as to why developing that building commercially would be good for the town. But he, has he got any plans what he's going to develop it into? Well, he's, in the, he's got a variety of thoughts that, that, he's, that he's looking at. Um, He's got a, if you got a place, put some big storage tanks because he's not going to put a sprinkler system in there without some storage tanks. I'm, I'm sure having it designed that that's yeah. part of the entire cost for Because yeah. yeah. it's a little school had to. Yeah, school yeah, school had yeah. to. Yeah. 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 yeah, everybody has to. So I'm yeah. sure in looking at that and designing it that that's all, you know, that that's Probably all being done. Kind of yeah, so um, they have Miller sprinkling. So just to, that that um, when the to, for us as a select board to be supportive of that of, of yeah. redeveloping that building and turning it into a into something that could be very nice on the grand list. Mm -hmm. You know, public safety for the other building. That building caught a fire. Well, you kiss them all the day on yeah. that side of the road. Yeah, yeah. We'll that's, another that's one of the things they realized. Thing. That's. One of the other things they've realized and, mm. and actually will probably be very helpful in applying in this grant, that it isn't just, you know, historical building, la la la, economic development, but it's a public safety issue as well. Now, is it, uh, what I'm hearing is uh, the Hyde Park water system is not capable no. of supplying enough. <laughs> Correct. No. Correct. Oh, okay. That's why I have to put in the big storage tanks. See, the little school, the LCA yeah. had to put them in from that yeah. expansion. No, that, you know where the water yeah. water is from the yeah. village. Right. I see they were out um, behind my place the other day surveying, and I talked to the guy, and they were thinking about putting a new water system in. Anybody heard that? Well, I knew oh, they yeah, they've been about, working on that forever. Yeah. I, I knew they were working on, they were going to have to renew um, the water pipes that have been in there ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, that's a they. I don't know if they were doing a whole new You village person, you've been getting plenty of notices on this. Didn't open them. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> when your water bill goes up, you'll know now. <laughs> yeah, they're they're. I probably won't that's worry about it. That's a big that. deal. Yeah, that's the old that's old system. Okay. Anything else on the this, and then we need an executive session. Uh, one uh, quick thing. Uh, uh, in the process of working with the fire department to update their job descriptions. Yeah. And I, I think I sent that to you. You did, yeah. There's not, there's some things in here that are new, but most of it's not terrible or too, too out of whack. It's mostly a tune-up because they haven't looked at it that closely for a while. One of the things that is kind of interesting is they want to have a whole new pay structure 
which is diff totally different than what we do now. So I asked uh, Ed and Brad, I said, I've got these draft job descriptions of this new set rate, hourly rate, which is three or four dollars higher than what people are making now. And I said, you didn't intend for that to be effective July 1st or without more discussion with the board. And they said that was, a, that was the starting point for a budget discussion this fall. So the structure's good, the job descriptions look good, they went through and fine-tuned their job titles and all the ranks, uh, but that that three or four dollars more is going to take some discussion with the board and the fire chief and mm -hmm. Brad when they come in October, November, whenever they show up for the budget. So I just want to let you know that that's, that was one of the three things we were working on was job descriptions and then what's left for fire bylaws and then everything else that really needed to be in the town personnel politics. Yeah. We'll do one exactly. So those are the three things I just want to leave. We're still working on working those. On them. It's okay. all paperwork. Okay, good. Yeah. Just like the internal control policies upstairs. It's just hard to sit down and get it started because it takes time. But we'll get there. That's all I got. Okay. So okay. We're going to need an executive session. We'll need somebody are, are, all, are we all done with everything uh, else so she can pack up and give us? Well, that's what I was going to say, right? Anybody got anything else they need to? No. Nope. Nope. We got everything. Nope. Okay. Terrific. Then we'll take a move to go into executive session. Second. Uh, Are you sand hauling yet? Like back sand hauling? Just for one of sand? What? I haven't heard nothing yet. We need a topic. What? We need a topic. Personnel issues. I've got, pers highway. I've got personnel and real estate on the agenda. Right. You got it. We're good. Town highway, he said. Personnel. personnel. Yeah, personnel. Right. Not right. real estate for highway.